Hey guys, this is Eddie the Magic Monk. Welcome to the second lesson on annuities. And in this lesson, we're going to focus on showing you guys how to use the annuities formula. Okay, so if you remember last lesson, what happened was we showed you a spreadsheet that calculates that if you saved a hundred dollars into your into the bank every single month how much money will you have in uh, three years time and the answer was uh, $3,818 um, including the interest that you get paid right so now we're going to show you how to find out the answer without using a spreadsheet right because using the spreadsheet it takes a takes a while and you can see here right now I have 36 rows just to figure out this information whereas I could just put some numbers into a formula and I will get three thousand eight hundred eighteen dollars and sixteen cents as the answer straight away so how do I do that so here is the annuities formula and it might look a little bit long to you but after I have explained what each of the variables mean it's actually quite a quick um, calculation so I'll explain what it all means I'll show you how to use it and then I'm going to leave um, the proof of the formula uh, to the next lesson Okay, so what do all these variables mean? A means the final amount in your bank account. Right, uh, this is the formula for how much money you'll have in the bank in a savings account. So you're putting money in and um, you have some money in there that keeps growing. Okay, the interest keeps getting added into your account and um, your payments get added to your account as well so A is the final amount you have in your account P stands for principal which is your initial amount and in our bank account that we did in the last example our principal was actually zero right because in the first month we had zero dollars in our bank but we can change that later on um, if we wanted to so pre is the principal how much money you have in the beginning um, Q is the regular payment amount and you can see right now we are saving a hundred dollars into our account every month so Q is going to be a hundred and our principal was zero our final amount is what we're trying to find in our situation and we want to now talk about n n represents the number of time periods and in our case um, we actually have 36 periods right remember our spreadsheet we calculated how much money we'll have at the end of 36 months right so the number of time periods is 36 and the R is the growth rate per period so what is the growth rate per period well when we say growth rate what we mean is we want to include the original a hundred percent when we calculate the rate so the rate uh, usually um, a percentage is usually uh, let's say three percent right or in our case it's uh, four percent Actually, let me just check 
yeah, it's 4% per annum, right? So usually the interest rate is 4%. But when we talk about the growth rate, it's like how much do we want to increase our original amount by? Right, uh, so the rate has to include the original 100%, so we write it as the growth rate would be 104%, right? So we're increasing our original 100% by 4%, so it's the re growth rate is 104%. Now, w because it's the growth rate per period, right, um, it's going to be 1 plus right cuz 100% is just the same as 1 now it's 4 out of 100 but this 1 plus 4 over 100 right this amount is for a whole year right so what we're doing is we're not just compounding the rate yearly we're compounding monthly so it can't be just 4 divided by 100 it has to be 4 divided by 12 divided by 100 right because we have to convert the rate from a yearly rate to a monthly rate and then we divide it by 100 to get the decimal and then we add one to it, right? So um, we're four over twelve. Okay, so in this calculation, four over twelve is the rate of interest per period, right? Because four was the annual interest divided by twelve will give you the monthly interest, which is the interest rate per period and then we divide it by 100 that will give us a decimal plus one and so if you type this into the calculator so it's one plus uh, bracket 4 over 12 uh, divided by 100 alright and you get 1.0033333 1.003 recurring so let's put that into our um, formula so it's 1.003 recurring so now we have enough information to put all these numbers into our formula Right, so I'm just going to put it in at the top here so you can see it. So this then equals, I'm going to use a different color. So P is equal to 0 times uh, Rn. So the whole beginning part is just equal to 0 because P is 0. Plus Q is $100 times r to the power of n so it's 1.003 um, recurring to the power of n which is 36 minus 1 okay and then divided by uh, 1.003 recurring minus 1 Okay, so if I type all this into my calculator, um, well, firstly, the bottom part, 1.003 minus 1 is just going to be 0 0.003. So let me just fix that part up. So it's 100 times 1.003 recurring to the power of 36 minus 1 over... Um, 0 0.003 recurring so if I type all this into my calculator now back to Desmos which is the calculator that I'm using you can see there's a very useful function is that I can store one of my answers into a variable 
So instead of typing in 1.00333 again in my second calculation, in my first calculation, if I type in R equals at the beginning of that, then it stores the number 1.003 recurring into the variable R. So in my second calculation, I can just type R instead of all of these numbers. So I'm now going to type in 100 times bracket R to the power of 36 minus 1 uh, and then divide it by ooh, I should put 100 at the top but it probably doesn't make any difference divide it by um, R minus 1 okay and look at what the answer is the answer is 3818.16 right 3818.16 which is exactly the same as what I had in my annuities example 3818.16 so this shows you that the formula works you don't need an Excel spreadsheet okay but where does this formula come from okay if you're interested in where the formula comes from then I'm going to make a separate video discussing where this formula comes 